Yeah, well, I'm turning off the video. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm just going to wait a couple minutes to let everyone sign in. And then we'll get started. Um, hi, Julia. I'm Sherry Lahane. Hi. Hi, Sherry. How are you? Good. I'm just going to ask a question to the group while we're waiting. Um, sure. can, can I see a show of hands if you've already logged into your Newzella account? Uh, less than half. Okay. Okay. Susan has, Elizabeth has, Leslie has. Okay, great. Okay. All right, we're going to show you, uh, if you want, while we're waiting, if you don't already, open it up on another tab, because we're going to be asking you to go in so that you know that you're in our paid subscription. Yeah, I know I, I finally read the end of the email that says I have to merge the accounts, so I haven't done that yet. Okay. Because I have old accounts. Okay. The same with me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who is in Zoom too? You labeled. Do you want to? Angie Jalbert. Oh, Angie. Okay. Um, I also um, I have been trying to get them to merge my free account with the paid account, and uh, they just keep sending me um, a um, emails that they have my um, report for uh, my ticket. And I guess a couple hours ago, they sent me an email asking for the name of my school and school address. Um, I, I had already told them that it was through an organization. So I don't okay. Know yep. Okay. That's the address for uh, Rhode Island Adult Ed, or? Yep. Okay. So um, we'll they'll be addressing that today. Okay. I, I finally figured out what you need to do. Um, they sent me a little video, and I think that they'll be sharing it with you as well. And, and I'll share it with the whole field in the all group, um, this AA Rhode Island, all adult, Rhode Island adult at all staff group. Hey, Belinda. Hey, how are you? Good. I, off the back of your last comment, I actually have something that Lee's put together, like an email that has a bunch, like a, two videos that I can send to you first. And if you like that, then send that out. Okay, great. Everyone. Yep. And then actually, Karen, if you wanted to um, chat in, if you don't mind, chat in your support ticket, I'm going to escalate that right now, actually, or, you know, please, Jim, Belinda and I will escalate that, and then we should hopefully be able to get that taken care of, um, hopefully by the, before the end of the session. Do you happen to have that ticket number? Um, yeah. Perfect. Um, I'm, I'm noticing that I just got an updated... Um, New Zella link, but that's not what I used. Is that going to be a problem for all the people that we sent the other link to? Which, oh, you mean for the session today? Correct. Did you send them the Zoom or the Google link or the Zoom link? Because there hopefully should be just one, but if we need to fix yeah. that, I can. I am just hoping there is just one. Um, yeah. I think. How many people are on the call currently? 17, including us. So that's 17 minus four uh, is 13. Okay. I didn't see another. Um, I just got this like in my inbox probably minutes ago because I was oh, on something else. Okay. <laughs> that's the only reason why I'm like, hmm. <laughs> what I did, Joan, was I took off the Google Meet Hangout from the like the calendar invite. So 
hopefully that was all I did, but I don't know if um, okay. folks were shared on the, if you share the Zoom link, hopefully they were able to get in. Um, Cause I yeah. just took I the mean, Google me. I didn't want to be confusing. Yeah. You know what? I will, I will basically watch my email and not okay. panic because I used whatever I had sitting, you know, on my calendar. And yes. I, was, I got in. So yeah. Perfect. We're, okay, we're going to assume it's all good. <laughs> okay. That works. And if anything, this is going to be recorded. And so, you know, hopefully folks, if they are able to join or uh, what happened, we'll make sure that you get the recording and they can watch it on their own. Perfect. Time. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. No problem. I do apologize for that confusion, um, but hopefully this will be good. <laughs> okay. Um, so Joan and Jelly, should we go ahead and get um, started? Sure. Why not? Perfect. For, All right. On time, people who, who arrive on time should get their time used appropriately, right? Perfect. I agree. Awesome. So thank you all for joining me today. My name is Julia Matthews. I'm a customer success manager here at Newzella. I joke, it's a fancy title for, I really support all of my districts and um, how to use the day-to-day -day of Newzella, how to log in, how to you know um, create assignments, how to find resources. Um, so that's what I'm here for to support you today. And just a little fun fact, I'm a former math teacher. I taught middle school and high school math, both in uh, public and private schools. Um, so I've been in education many, many years and just wanna say thank you for all you're doing, especially during this crazy tough year. Um, but if there's anything that we can do to support you, please let us know, that's what we're here for. So I know for today, we want to make sure that you're able to log in, be able to um, create your classes or make sure that your classes are synced over, um, as well as um, making sure that you know how to access those rosters. So what I'm going to do is take um, you step by step. Oops, got some uh, windows here. So I'm going to take you step by step of how to do that. Um, and I think Sherry, you mentioned there's quite a few folks who are brand new to Newzella, right? And then there's, gonna, there's folks who are um, already had a, an account. So I think what I'll do is I'll go through both steps. So if you're brand new to Newzella, I'll show you how to you know, create an account. If you are a returning Newzella user, I'll also show you that as well. Okay, so if everyone can just bear with us today, um, we appreciate your patience and then we'll get into the product itself. So this will be you know, for everyone uh, after that. All right. So I'm gonna start with my new folks, if that's okay. So um, new folks, if you are brand new to Newzella, what you're gonna want to do is go to newzella.com. Okay, so you would just type in newzella.com and then it's going to be hopefully, I think it's a few easy steps. So let's make sure it is for you. In the upper right hand corner, you will see a join now button. So if you are brand new to Newzella, you would click on that join now button. All right, and then you're going to select your role. So you would be an educator. You would be um, most likely a teacher. Um, so you would let, um, click on teacher, that drop down and click there. You would click on next, okay? And then here, you would just click sign up with Google, okay? So being a Google district, you would click sign up with Google. What it will take you to is, it will take you to um, a homepage that's gonna have you input your Google email address, so your district email address. And then it's gonna ask if they can connect Newzella you know, with your um, Google account, just say yes. And then once you click on that, it should take you to um, the main page at Newzella. Okay. If it doesn't take I, you, something, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Okay, I'm just going to clarify the Google district email. So, it, yep. So your Google district email is Rhode Island Adult Ed. There's three exceptions. If you're with Rural, Genesis Center, or Tritown. If you're with those, you're going to choose your organizational email, which is whatever, blah, 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 at gencenter.org, at rural.org, at tritownconty.ri.org. If you're not with one of those, then you're at rhodeislandadulted.org. All of those that I just mentioned are all Google accounts. Thanks. Thank you for clarifying that, Sherry. That is very important. Okay. So I'm going to give folks a second. Um, so as you, if you're new, take a minute to, you know, try that, log in. I'm going to quickly um, pivot over to my returning folks. And then if there are any issues, please chat them in or, or take yourself off mute. And then we're going to make sure before we move on that you're all able to access your account. Okay. So I'm now going to um, speak to the folks that are returning. So those who had a free account um, and, and now um, have the paid subscription, you're going to do the same thing. You would go to newzella.com. And then you're just going to click on sign in, okay? And then you can either click on sign in with new, sign into Newzella with Google 
or if you want to just make sure you can put in that email address that you're using with your um, district. Okay, so those different um, domains, put in your username or email, sign in with the same exact um, password that you used with your free account. You would then click on sign in. And then if you did have a free account, it will usually ask you here if you want to merge your accounts, you're gonna say yes, and then follow the prompts there, okay? I have a question. Uh -huh. I teach part-time in a Pawtucket, Pawtucket adult ed, but I don't have an adult ed Gmail account. I just have my regular school account uh, at the other school I teach at, so my New Zilla is through there. Yeah, so you can't use that, Kip. I'm going to send you, um, I'm going to tell you in the chat. Can you have access to the chat in this Zoom? Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to tell you what to do, okay? I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Sherry. All right. So Sherry Kip um, is helping Kip there. Anyone um, having issues logging in? Anyone have trouble creating their account when you log in and when you're in to New Zella, you should see our home ah. page here and then we'll go into the next steps in a minute. Read it. Okay. I see the home page, but it's not asking me to merge. It just um, gives me my old account, which was this is the same email as I would have this time. So. Okay. So Susan, you are, um, okay. And I'm gonna make a note real quick for you, Susan and Karen. When you, the next step I'm gonna have everyone do real quick is click uh, over in the right hand corner where your initials are. If you click on that, you should all see New Zella Essentials under subscription products. Uh -huh. So I'm assuming Susan and Karen, do you, I'm assuming you, um, assuming you guys don't see that, right? Okay, Karen, I see you shaking your head. I see it. Okay, so Susan, then that means Susan, you're good. Um, okay. So it probably, it probably figured it out on the back end. Sometimes our technology is smart, which is good. Um, so you should be good to go. Okay. Did you see the New Zealand Essentials? Yeah. And then Karen, bear with us. We're going to get you set up, we promise. <laughs> so thank you for your patience. So everyone should right now, yep, if you clicked on your initials, you should see what I'm seeing here, subscription products, New Zella Essentials. Okay. Again, if you don't see that, please chat it in so that we can um, support you and get your account set up. Okay. Once you're there, now what I would like you to do is click on settings. So we're gonna click on settings, all right. And then it takes you now to your settings page. And then I want everyone to check for me, former math teacher, so I always say triple check your work. Click on the account tab, which is the second one from the left, okay. And then just make sure your account information is correct. Mainly make sure that you're at the correct school. Mm -hmm. So your school, you have two choice, four choices, Rural, Genesis, Tritown, or Rhode Island Adult Ed. So you're not going to see, for example, Pawtucket Adult Ed or uh, Progresso Latino. Okay, those are the only four choices that you would you would see. And for for most of you here, I think uh, from I think I know almost everybody here. You're with either Rural or uh, RI Adult Ed. Julia, I have a question. Yes. It's Zoom to Angie. Um, I tried to go in and I, I tried to sign in and it was asking me um, for the Google account, but my Rhode Island Google account, adult ed account was not there. Um, when I tried to add it, I was having a lot of difficulty. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost right now because um, I was trying to get in and uh, so I'm just jumping in. This is all very new to me and I, I'm really very lost. No worries. Where, um, what, what step are you at now? Are you at newzella.com? Are you not, sorry, it sounds like you're not able to log in with your, you can't find your um, uh, Rhode Island adult ed email domain. Is that correct? And it's not letting you in through there? Right, it's not listed on there. Um, so I, when I tried to bring it up, it just had my personal account and my education exchange account. And mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to get into the Rhode Island account. Mm -hmm. I can help her with that offline if you want, Julia. 
Um, okay. It's up to you. It's up to you. Um, Angela, are you available on fr on Friday morning at 930? Uh, I just have to check. Okay. All right. You can continue. I'll, I'll let's, let's do it in the chat. I don't want to hold up the whole group. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. And then if you, Sherry, Angela, if you guys have any additional questions, just of course, let me know. And then we'll definitely troubleshoot on the back end. Um, okay. So yeah, Angela will get you taken care of. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So if you don't see one of the four schools, as Sherry mentioned, or if you're not listed at the correct school, what you're going to want to do is right here that there, the icon with the pencil in the box, you're going to click on that. Okay. Um, and then what you're going to do is accept the transferring schools. The one thing I do want to point out is that if you do have classes currently associated with that school that you're with, you will need to contact our support team. Um, I'll put that into the chat. It's support at uzella.com. They're going to be able to merge that for you. And we um, we recommend doing that instead of having you do it yourself, just so that we can make sure everything gets copied over. Okay. So again, if you already have classes created that you're teaching now, and it, you're not at the correct school, and we need to merge them, uh, contact our support team and have them do that for you so we can make sure everything gets transferred over. Otherwise, if you're brand new and it's the, the you need to update the school um, name or school um, that you're tied to, go ahead and click I accept, click on next. Okay, um, is this your new faculty? You would say yes. And then you would be able to search for the school that you need to be at. Okay, so as you know, um, oops, let me just type in, you can type in by name, you can type in by um, zip code. Um, so you could type it in there and search for the school. I just was curious to okay. see what it is. All right. So I'm going to go back now because I want to make sure I don't add in the wrong school here. Let me just sign out and go back into my account. But that's how you would um, search for the school and make sure that you are in the correct school. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. Now I need to figure out how to get back to my Nuzella account. Okay. All right, let's just find a school here. All right, I'm just gonna add a random school and then we'll keep going. All right, thank you. Okay, once you get your school added, it's gonna take you through like a welcome um, intro steps here. You are welcome to skip the intro or if you wanna just take a few minutes to, um, you know, associate yourself with Uzella and like what, you know, what's new and what's happening here. I'm just gonna make this up here so I can keep going. I taught math, all right. And then you can now get into Uzella. All right. Okay. Sounds like we're all there. Um, now let's talk about the fun things about Uzella, the great things that you have access to. So in Uzella, the product that you have is essential. So you have access to all of our resources in Uzella. And so if for you, those of you who are new to Newzella, we're an instructional content platform. Uh, we take articles and we level them at five different reading levels. So it allows your students to access these articles at their just right reading levels and allows you to differentiate what you're teaching um, for your students. So what you're going to probably find most helpful is um, our search feature. But before I jump into search, I just want to intro you to our home page here. You're always going to see our latest, greatest articles that we've published here on that main page. And so if you scroll through, you'll see some of our featured articles. So anytime we're doing any celebrations, so like Black History Month, uh, Women's History, um, all of those, any featured text sets that we have at Newzella will be um, here on that main page. You also see some of our new videos that we've um, published and highlighted, some popular articles, so articles that lots of other teachers are using on Newzella. I love the good news section. I know we always need some good news these days. So check out some of the good news articles. And so this main page, I like to say, is sort of like a social media feed. You can see what's new, what's popular, what's happening at Newzella. So these are the most recent articles that we have, okay? Um, if you do have any visual learners, I'm a visual learner. We have a great multimedia section. So you can see there's graphs, cartoons, charts. Um, so great resources here in the multimedia section. And then you've got your opinion articles, um, news articles. And then if you do have Spanish speaking students, we also have, um, articles that are translated into Spanish, not like a Google Translate. We do have actual translators, so they're very authentically um, translated articles. And with the Spanish articles, they also do come at five different reading levels as well, okay? Now, you're mostly gonna probably hang out in the search. So with the Newzella search function, it's very much like Google. 
So if you are teaching a unit coming up, um, let's just say you're teaching social studies or history and you're doing a unit on the Civil War. I can type in Civil War. I can type in search. And then anything that has to do with a Civil War in Newzella will pop up here. You can search by articles. Okay, so you can um, select show, show more articles to see what articles might sound interesting to you to assign. I always like to um, highlight text sets. So text sets are groups of articles around a theme or topic that allows teachers to bring in different perspectives, um, allow for student choice, um, research projects. So text sets are great. And I'll just show you what it looks like if I click into a text set here. These are pre-populating, pre-created text sets. Oh boy, am I having issues? Hold on, let me see if I can find a better one here. Um, awesome. So you'll see you know, a description of the text set. You'll see different articles that come with the text set. So I always say as a teacher, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. So if you um, find a text set that you absolutely love, feel free to use that. Okay. And then if we have any videos on the topic that you're searching, you'll see them down here. Okay. Now, once you find an article that you like or you're interested in using, um, for example, let's just do defining battles of the Civil War here. I'll show you what you can do actually while you're in an article. Okay, so this is great because you can see the Spanish version as well as the um, English version. Okay, so right up here, the first thing you'll see are the Lexile levels. So as I mentioned, all of our articles come at five different reading levels. You'll see a max level and then you'll see four other Lexile levels. Okay, the max is always the article as it was originally published. And you can find information on the article right below the image here. So right below the image, you'll see which content provider that this comes from. So this is from the National Geographic. You'll see the word count of the article. You'll see recommended for. So what this means is the content of this article is recommended for upper elementary to high school students. And then where you see text level, this is the grade level that it's written at. So um, at the max level, this article is written at a 12th grade reading level. Now, just so you can see, if I toggle down, let's just say to the 810 Lexile level, all right, I can check down here my information. The word count is going to change slightly. The recommended for has not changed. The content hasn't changed. It's still recommended for upper elementary to high school students. But now we've leveled this at a fifth grade reading level. Okay. So you as a teacher will be able to see what the different grade levels that this article comes with. But as a student, your students will only be able to see the Lexile levels. So just so you know what your students see versus what you see, okay? And as a teacher, you can preview um, what the different levels are that come with the article. Right. And just to show you Spanish, when I click on Spanish, all right, it's gonna to toggle now to my Spanish article. So same thing with the Spanish articles, right up here, you're gonna see the, um, the Lexile levels. So you can check out the max level. This is at a, a, a 12th grade reading level. And then let's just toggle down to the 560 Lexile level. This is now written at a third grade reading level. Okay, so this is where you can see what grade levels, what Lexile levels the articles come with. A couple of things that our, our articles come with. So if you are doing direct instruction with your student, have something called present mode. So it gives you that clean interface. And so you can interact with your students as you're um, delivering your instruction with the article. Okay. When you click on exit, you get you are exiting out. Um, read aloud function is great for your auditory learners. So the read aloud um, function uh, reads the entire article to your students. Okay, so if you have any great um, auditory learners or want to support auditory learners, um, we do have that read aloud function. And then one thing I also like to share is if you want to create your own text set, once you become really savvy with Newzella, you can create your own text sets. And so to do that, all you have to do is add, click that button there, create your text set. And then as you're um, adding different articles to your text sets, you would click this button and then find the uh, text set that you've already created. So you have the ability to also create your own text sets if that's what submit is of interest to you. And if you need support on doing that, let me know. I'm happy to walk you through that, okay? A couple other things that you're gonna find in our, um, in our uh, in Newzella are um, our annotations feature. I love annotations, so I'd love to share this with you. So with any of our articles, you can make annotations. And the way you make annotations is you highlight the word, the sentence, or the phrase that you would like to annotate. And then on the right-hand side, once you um, highlight, you're going to see your annotations box. You have a different color codes that you can use. And then with the annotations, you can put anything and everything in annotations. 
You can challenge your students by asking them questions. You can provide definitions. You can provide um, extra context. You can link external resources like videos, um, speeches, um, you know, short clips of what you're trying to teach your students. So you can do a lot of things with annotations. And it's a great way to pause and reflect and kind of guide your students as they're reading through the articles. Okay, so you can put questions, again, um, comments, oops, can't type here, um, links. So a lot of things that you can do with the um, annotations feature. And then whatever you annotate, you can share those annotations with your students. You would click on the share button here. Oops, I'm having issues with my computer, but you would click on the share button and then it would be shared to your students. So when they open up the article and the assignment, they will see your annotation. They can also respond to your annotation and they can also make their own annotations as well. Okay. So love the annotations tool. If you need support on using the annotations tool, please let me know. Um, I've seen, you know, for English, teachers will, you know, highlight, you know, definitions or, or, or vocabulary words and provide definitions. Um, for social studies, teachers will highlight thesis statements, you know, finding claims and evidence and science. So lots of ways that you can use the annotations feature um, to support your students. Okay. And the great thing about annotations is it's Lexile specific. So you can, you know, provide more support for um, students reading at lower Lexile levels. You can challenge students that are reading at higher Lexile levels, but they are going to be um, Lexile specific so that you can you know, differentiate how you support your students at the different reading levels. Okay, and then the great thing is your students can also make their own annotations, which is nice, all right. Other activities that come with the articles. So when I click on activities, you're gonna see a write prompt. You'll also see a quiz. So every um, article comes with a write prompt. So we've already curated one and usually it's an ELA, um, English, you know, um, English arts, kind of focused questions. So explain the central idea um, of the article. You're welcome to use that um, prompt. You're welcome to delete it and then create your own prompt um, for your students. I've also seen teachers ask questions um, in the right prompt, um, you know, link to um, a graphic organizer into the right prompt. So there's lots of ways that you can use the right prompt. It's not just to summarize what, they're read, what they've read, um, but it's a great formative assessment tool um, for teachers to use. So feel free to use our right prompt, feel free to delete it and then save your um, new write prompt that meets the goal of your lesson. Write prompts, um, to note, will be seen by students at all the different Lexile levels. Okay, so uh, no matter what Lexile level your students are reading at, they're always gonna see your write prompts. The quiz, on the other hand, is gonna be Lexile specific. So the uh, questions are gonna match the context of the article that they're reading at. So think of it as, you know, uh, students reading at a higher Lexile level will have probably slightly more challenging questions. Um, students reading at lower Lexile level will have slightly less challenging questions, but it's gonna match the context um, of what they're reading, okay? And so um, really it's, it's formative assessment, right? Making sure that they understand the, the central idea that what's um, discussed in the article. And so you as a teacher can preview the questions. You'll be able to preview the answers as well. Um, so it's multiple choice. And then um, don't worry, your students won't be able to see the answers, but you can see them and, and be able to um, take a look at them yourselves. And then one thing I like to know is uh, teachers sometimes use the annotation feature to kind of support students on, you know, how to, you know, um, you know the, demonstrate their understanding of the article. So sometimes teachers will say annotate, you know, where you found evidence to answer at question one, right, or question four. Um, so it's a great tool to kind of use in conjunction with your um, quiz so that you can see, you know, where students' train of thoughts are or how they're finding the answers for the um, quiz questions. So again, quizzes are going to be Lexile specific, write prompts are not, and then your annotations feature will also be Lexile specific. And then once you've looked at the annotations, you like the write prompts, everything looks good, you can now assign it to your students. You would click on this blue assign button in the upper right hand corner. So when I click on the assign button, it takes me to my assignment page. Here you can edit the title of the assignment. You can um, assign this to one or multiple classes. Okay, so you would just click on this drop down and then select the class or classes that you wanna assign this article to. Here in the instruction box, you can put any and all instructions. So you could say step one is read the article. Uh, step two would, could be um, respond and make your own annotations on you know, whatever skill that you're teaching or whatever you like them to um, annotate. You can say step three is complete the right prompt. So essentially think of the instruction box as what you would like your students to do. And so when students open up the article, they will be able to see your instructions. Um, so you can put in everything and anything that you want your students to do with the article. Okay. And then here, 
what we recommend is leaving it at Newzella recommended. And that's what um, all articles are defaulted to. So at the Newzella recommended, that means that when you assign this article to your students, it will automatically differentiate it for you. So it'll assign the article to your students at their just right reading level. So for example, if I'm a striving reader and I'm reading at a sixth grade level, um, I'm gonna get the, get the article at whatever level is closest to the sixth grade reading level. If you are a um, excelling reader and you're reading at a ninth grade, um, for example, reading level, you're gonna get the article as close to the ninth grade reading level that this comes with. So you as a teacher don't need to go in and say, you know, like John needs at this level, Mary needs at this level, and Newsola does that for you. Okay, so I usually say leave that newsletter recommended so it's automatically differentiated for you when you assign it. If you do want to um, do what we say, what we call lock a level, you can. So what that allows you to do is you can lock um, the article at a certain grade level that you want your students to read at. Okay, so if you want them to read at the 12th grade reading level, you can lock it. And what that means is that your students will get the assignment. Everyone will get the assignment at the 12th grade reading level if you lock a level. I've seen teachers do that, you know, when they're introducing a new skill, um, if they want to do maybe a formative assessment on how their, how their students are reading at a certain level. So it, you can lock that level. And if students wanted to unlock the other levels, what they would need to do is complete the quiz, and then they would be able to unlock the other levels. Okay. How does Nuzella know how to, what level the student's going to be best for them? I don't know. Great question. So I love that question because the way that Nuzella does um, the leveling is, as you are assigning articles and they're reading more and more articles and taking the quizzes, we take the data of how they perform on the quizzes and that's how Newzella adjusts um, to the different reading levels of your students. So initially what's gonna happen is, um, depending on what the grade level that you teach or that you would you know, assign to your classes. Um, so for, for example, if you chose 10th grade, all of the articles initially will be assigned to your students at the 10th grade reading level or whatever's closest to the 10th grade reading level. And then as you assign more articles and you're, um, the students take more quizzes, that's how Newzella adjusts to their just right reading levels. Um, Hopefully that answered your question. Can I, can I ask a quick question that of goes course. back just a second? You talked about sure. highlighting and I think I had heard before that if you highlight online, but then you try to print it out, you're not gonna see that highlighting. Is that is that correct? I just wanna make sure. That is correct, Joan. Um, okay. Right now we're not able to unfortunately print out the annotations. It just stays online. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. just good to know. Thanks for Thanks. that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Okay, so once you're ready to sign, um, I apologize, I don't have a, a, a class, uh, related to this account, but basically once you click that assign button, what it will take you to is your assignments page. Okay. So in your assignments page, you know what, let me go into my, um, my other demo account. Let's see here. Where is my, let's go into this demo account here. Um, what's going to happen is once you click on assign, it will take you to your assignments tab. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like here. So in your assignments tab, which you can find up here. All right where it says assignments, it'll show you all the assignments that you've assigned to your students. You'll be able to see the date it was assigned on. You'll be able to see the title of the article and then you'll be able to see the class or classes that you assigned it to, okay? If you are a Google school and you're using Google Classroom, you can share this assignment directly to your Google Classroom and assign it that way as well. So every article, you see that little arrow button at the top. If you wanna assign it through your Google Classroom, you would click on that arrow, you would click on Google Classroom, it would take you to your Google Classroom, so then you would select the class, um, the, the action, and then that Newzella article is right there and it will link your students directly to the assignment. Okay, and then you can put in your information, title, instructions, your grading, your points, and then the due date, and then click on assign. So if you wanted to assign to Google Classroom, you can do it that way. But do the students still need to sign into their Newzella account if they do that? So essentially, once they click in, it would automatically sign uh, sign them in. Okay, so that, great. Yeah, Thank you. no problem. Yeah, so if it's through Google Classroom, once they click on the link, it'll um, essentially, you know, sign them in um, once they go into it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay. So that's how you can share it through Google Classroom. All right. And then here, this is how you can track progress of your students. So let me show you an example here. Okay, so you'll see uh, these ones, zero out of 10. So no one's looked at it yet. No one's gone in and done the assignment. But here I see, okay, 10 of my, all my students have already gone in and started the assignment or completed it. 
And so what you'll be able to see is as you scroll down, you'll be able to see all your students here. You'll see some of um, uh, when they went into the article, how much time they spent, uh, what level they're reading at, how they performed on the quiz, how they performed, um, or if they completed the right prompt, you'll see grade now. And then if they made any annotations, you would see it here, okay? You won't see this last column, so it, you, you can ignore the power words. Um, and then what you can do as a teacher is click into each individual student. And then this is where you're able to see, oh, did you know Brenda respond to my annotation? Did uh, Brenda make her own annotations? So this is the screen where you're gonna be able to see kind of all that student work, okay? And then when you click on activities, this is where you'll see, okay, this is how she performed on the quiz. So you can also see how she answered. So luckily she got all of them right, so which is great. Um, if she did it, you can see how she answered. You'll be able to see also the right prompt. So whatever she responded would be right here where it says response. And then you as a teacher can use our four point grading skill if you would like. You can um, make comments, you can have them, you can return them for revision before you grade the right prompt. So this is essentially where you will be able to grade your student work, okay? And so I was on Brenda, now I'm gonna go to um, Angela here, right? So you could click into each student to see what they've done and how they um, performed and if they completed all of the um, assignment pieces. So that's again, you would go on to assignments, you would then be able to click into each assignment to see again your student work. And then one other thing I wanna point out is the reading summary. So you can access reading summary through the assignment tab or if you click on binder, that'll, it'll be that first drop down right there. And the reading summary allows you to see how your students are performing or reading in Uzella. So it'll give you a list of your students, either by all your students or by the classes that you teach. You can see what reading level they're at. So for example, Brenda is at a 5.7. So she's reading at a fifth grade reading level, but she's getting close to the sixth grade reading level. Um, another example here, uh, Kimberly is at a 3.2. So she's at a third grade reading level and she's still just you know starting at the third grade reading level. So that decimal point shows you how close they are to that next reading level, okay? And then percentile is how they're performing against all the other um, you know, seventh graders on Uzella, all the other 12th graders on Uzella. Uh, the per, uh, excuse me, the articles viewed is how many articles they've gone in and, and read, average time they spend, average quiz score, right score. So you'll get to see some of the average um, averages here. Um, on your binder page. And then when you click on each individual student, you'll also be able to see how they're progressing. So this chart shows you this blue reading level line. And so, you know, the goal is to see that blue line sloping up throughout the school year. And so this is how you can track your students' progress um, of how they're doing in Uzella throughout the school year. Okay, and then it gives you kind of more detailed um, view of the different articles and also, um, you know, how they're, how they're performing in, in Uzella. And then last piece I wanna point out, um, I know we're coming up on time here, but I'll save some time for questions. In the upper right-hand corner next to your initials, you're gonna see the Educator Center. Think of this as like your own personal support in a way and some resources that you can access. So here we've got some um, resources here. You've got a new Zella community that we just started this um, school year. It's a great, think of it as like a, I always say Facebook group. So think of it as a group of, of educators on Uzella. This is a great tool if you wanna you know, um, bounce ideas off, off of other teachers that are using Uzella, um, the community is a great place to, to go and check that out. So I've been in there, um, I put in like, I need science resources for like this unit or like I need to teach this in social studies, right? Like how do I, how are you doing it? And this is a great way to you know, share those ideas with other teachers or get ideas from other teachers. Professional learning takes you to um, some of the resources that we have um, to support you as teachers. So getting started resources, um, teaching today, distance learning resources. We also have live webinars every month. So take a look here. Um, there's lots of resources, lots of you know, support for teachers, lots of PD as well. So um, take a look to see what you, know, you might be able to use to support your, teacher, or support your students. And then right here, the last one, the support um, page here, this allows you to search for you know, anything that you need support with. So you know, how do I log in? How do I create a class? How do I use the annotations feature? Um, you can definitely search for those um, specific needs that you have. And then if you ever need to talk to someone, you, know, you can email one of us, or if you click on contact, this will take you to our support page and you can input what issue you're having. And then usually someone hopefully gets back to you within 24 to 48 hours and they can support you with any need that you have, okay? 
And this could be a good place for teachers, you know, those of you who have that free account that you need to merge, that you have classes already created, this is where you would go um, to make sure that your classes are merged together, your accounts are merged together correctly. All right, so you would go to the educator center, go to the support um, page, and then you can um, go to contact to contact our support team. Okay, I threw a lot of information at you. Um, love to give you some time to digest. Um, happy to answer any other questions um, that you may have about using Usella. So Julia, can you, can we, um, do we have to sign, set up accounts for students in Newzella if we're going to be sharing the things to Google Classroom? Thank you for asking, Susan. That's the one step I forgot. So no, you what you would actually do is when you sign into your account, you're gonna click on your initials. You're gonna click on settings, okay? And then you're gonna click into your classes tab right here. Mm -hmm. And then what you're gonna do is, I apologize, this is my staff account, but what you should see is both a create a class button and a sync with Google button. Do you yes. see the sync? Perfect, okay. Everyone, same, same for you. You should see a sync with Google. You would click on that sync with Google button, okay? And then a box will pop up and hopefully it should, be, should list all the classes that you're teaching this year. You would check those boxes that you want to sync into Newzella. Okay, thank you. No problem. And then once it syncs, you're good to go. Um, when you when you go into the, an article and assign an article, you should be able to select those class or classes that you want to assign the articles to. Okay, thank you. No problem. So yes, thank you for that, Susan. Everyone, um, what you want to do is make sure you go to your, your initials, again, settings, click on the classes tab and make sure you sync your classes from Google Classroom into Newzella so that you're able to assign um, the articles to your students. All right, joke, I'm like, I have to work on my teacher wait time. <laughs> Sherry, I just need to get Karen's email. I can't do anything with her support ticket without her email. Okay, okay so I actually figured it out. Okay. I, I, I had, um, when I did my free account, I, um, I used Crossroads as the name of my school. So when I um, went and looked in that, I was able to click on um, uh, Rhode Island Adult Ed, and so now I'm all set, except for I did lose my class. <laughs> but, um, I guess I can figure that out. Okay, good. And sorry, Karen, I just saw your chat, so that we okay. that figured out. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Um, I want to remind everybody too that I have drop-in um, hours every Friday at nine from nine thirty to ten thirty. If you want to jump on uh, quickly and get some help. Um, you can find the join link on the Rhode Island Adult Ed calendar. And if that time doesn't work for you, just reach out to me by email and I'll jump on a call with you. But I know that um, Belinda is going to share some resources also that I might be able to, that I will share with you all um, through the all group, the Rhode Island Adult Ed all group, all staff group. Um, and if you're not already on that, um, please send me an email to join. Yeah, I too just want to remind people that, you know, if anything comes up, whether it's you or someone else that you work with, do reach out to me or to Sherry and, you know, let us help you figure out or they, that other person figure out what needs to, you know, need to know. I would hate to think that someone didn't use it because they couldn't figure it out on their own. So, you know, just know that you have some resources out here. Um, well, I know time is precious for everyone, um, so I'm happy to hang on for another few more minutes. 
Bye. Um, and I'll let Sherry and Joan dismiss you. I don't want to be the person to say bye. Um, but if you do have any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us to the support team. Um, we're here. We're here to help you in any way that we can. If you need ideas of how to use Newzella, if you can't find a certain, you know, resource for a topic that you're teaching, that's what we're here for. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, and let us know what we can do to make your your lives a little bit easier. Okay. Hey, Julie, thank you so much, you know, thank you so much for today. Really, you know, appreciate the time and um, very helpful. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Anything yeah, you need. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. This was great. Yeah. Nice job. Good. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you for all your time. Um, and thank you for all you're doing. Again, I know it's been a, been a tough year and having been a former educator, I can't even imagine what you're all going through. So uh, thank you for what you're doing. And like I said, if we can do anything to help you, please let us know. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. All right. Best of luck, everyone. Um, and again, let us know what we can do. Take care. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone, and thanks. Bye. Thank you.